Canada versus the United Kingdom, two well-developed wealthy nations with relatively high quality of life. In some ways they are very similar and in others they couldn't be any further apart. To me, Canada and the UK are like cousins who sometimes hang out together, have a beer and have a pretty good relationship. We will compare them by looking at their key demographics, quality of life, economies and geography. And then once we have finished comparing them, we will ask you which one would you rather live in? And as this is a geography channel, we will try to stay clear of politics. I'm your host Sam and you're watching the Geography Bible. Let's kick off this video by taking a look at where they are both located geographically. The United Kingdom, made up of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, is an island nation in northwestern Europe, with the North Sea to the east and the Atlantic to the west. Canada, on the other hand, is a country in North America. Its 10 provinces and 3 territories extend from the Atlantic to the Pacific and northward into the Arctic Ocean. Ok, let's now take a look at their key demographics, starting off with their population and population densities. So the UK comes in as the 21st most populated country in the world, with a population of around 68 million, ahead of France and below Thailand. This comprises of around 56 million in England, 5.5 million in Scotland, 3.2 million in Wales and just under 2 million in Northern Ireland. Canada on the other hand ranks as the 39th most populated nation with a population of just under 38 million, putting them above Morocco and below Poland. Canada's population is growing faster than the UK's at around 1% per year compared to the UK which only has around 0.6%. The UK's most populated city when looking at the urban area is of course London coming in at around 9.3 million. For Canada, it is Toronto, at around 5.5 million. When it comes to population densities, however, they are a country mile apart. The UK comes in at around 280 people per kilometre squared, whereas Canada has just 3.85, a monumental difference. It is worth noting, however, that London's population density is estimated to be around 5,700 people per kilometre squared. Toronto is Canada's most densely populated city at around 4,330 people per kilometre squared, so surprisingly not too far off London. The average age across the UK is 40.5 years, with the average life expectancy at 81.2. Canada is slightly older at 41.1 and lives about a year longer on average. Let's now move on to the next section, economy and finance. Starting off with their gross domestic product, or as it's more commonly known, GDP. So at the time of making this video, coming in as the ninth largest economy in the world, we have Canada at just under 1.9 trillion US dollars, putting them above South Korea and below Italy. The UK, however, impressively sits in fifth place with around 3.1 trillion US dollars, putting them above India and below Germany. It is estimated, however, that in 2025, India will have overtaken the UK. If you are watching in 2025, then let us know in the comments if India succeeded. The UK's top 10 exports are as follows. Machinery, gems, vehicles, minerals, electrical machinery equipment, pharmaceuticals, medical equipment, aircraft, organic chemicals and plastics. And then Canada's top 10 exports are crude petroleum, cars, refined petroleum, aircraft, coal, fertilizers, wheat, aluminium, rapeseed and pharmaceuticals. The UK's total exports come to a total of 837 billion US dollars, compared to Canada's which is roughly 550 billion US dollars. When taking their populations into account, these stats compare pretty closely. When it comes to GDP per capita, which essentially shows the wealth of a country per individual, Canada just takes the win at just over 49,000 US dollars, compared to the UK's 46,000 US dollars. This ranks Canada and the UK as the 24th and 29th richest countries in the world when looking at this metric. The thing that I dislike the most about this metric is that most of the countries at the top are very small nations with tiny populations with lots of billionaires, such as Monaco, Bermuda and the Cayman Islands. The unemployment rate as of March 2021 for the UK was 5%, and Canada's was 6.9%, so a win for the UK here. UK debt was around £2.2 trillion at the end of the financial year of 2021, equivalent to 103% of GDP. Canada's, on the other hand, was 110%, so again, very similar. Debt in both of these countries drastically increased, 
due to the economic fallout from the global pandemic. And finally, let's take a look at how many billionaires both of these countries have. So very impressively, Canada has 64, meaning that there are around 1.14 billionaires per 1 million people. Compared to the UK, which has 56, equating to 0.67 billionaires per 1 million people. If you're wondering where salaries, average house and grocery prices are, they will be in the next section, quality of life. So let's start this section off by taking a look at the average salary in both of these countries. So in the UK, the average salary is just over £31,000, which is US$42,000. Canada's is around dollars which converts to just over US$53,000. So an impressive win for the Canadians, taking home over US$10,000 more per year on average. Now with this in mind, let's take a look at the cost of houses. So across the UK, at the time of making this video, the average house costs £268,000, which is around US$360,000. It must be noted, however, that the average London home will set you back over half a million pounds, which is just shy of US$700,000. Canada, on the other hand, has an average house price of an eye-watering dollars which works out to be around 562,000 US dollars. So when we take average salary and average house prices into account, the UK actually works out slightly cheaper. The average house price in the UK is 8.5 times the average salary, compared to Canada, which is 10.6. In my opinion, although Canadian houses may technically be more expensive, you do get more bang for your buck. Traditional Canadian houses tend to be gigantic and have plenty of space, which completely makes sense considering how big the country is. When looking at the overall cost of living index, Canada does take the win however, ranking as the 21st most expensive country to live in in the world, behind the USA and above the Netherlands. The UK sits in 19th place, above the US and below Sweden. Overall, Canada is about 6% cheaper to live in than the UK. So let's take a further in-depth look. So Canada compared to the UK is about 1% cheaper for food, 25% cheaper for transport, 40% cheaper for childcare, 10% cheaper for entertainment and sports, and 6% cheaper for clothing. However, it is 40% more expensive for groceries and about 2% more expensive for houses. According to the website numbio.com, which uses an advanced formula to calculate quality of life, Canada sits in 22nd place. Guess who sits just below in 23rd? The UK. It is almost neck and neck with these two countries. Canada does take the clear win when it comes to the crime index, however, ranking as the 56th safest country in the world. The UK sits in a very poor 74th. This formula uses many different variables such as drug-related crimes, robbery, violence and level of safety, walking home alone at night. The UK finally pulls one back when it comes to the healthcare index, ranking as having the 15th best healthcare system in the world, compared to Canada which sits in 26th place. Fun fact, the NHS, the UK's National Health Service, is the organisation with the 8th most workers in the world, at 1.7 million. To put this in perspective, the organisation with the most workers is the United States of America's Department of Defence, at 2.9 million. McDonald's has 1.9 million as well. When it comes to the obesity rates, Canada is slightly worse than the UK, at 29% and 27% respectively of the adult population being classed as obese. When looking at clean air, Canada takes another win, ranking as the country with the 10th cleanest air in the world, compared to the UK in 15th place. Of course, this completely varies as to where you are. The air quality of London or Montreal is completely different to the Lake District or the Rockies. When it comes to education, both of these countries seriously excel. Canada comes in as having the 8th best education system in the world. The UK, on the other hand, ranks as number 1. Out of the top 10 universities in the world, you will find 4 of them in the UK. That's Oxford. Cambridge, Imperial London and UCL. Canada does not feature any of their universities in the top 10. You have to scroll down to the 26th place to find the University of Toronto. Alright, time for some geography and climate. This should be interesting. So first, let's take a look at just how big both of these countries truly are. Let's jump over to our favourite website, thetruesize.com. 
where we can compare the sizes of countries side by side. So as you can see, Canada completely and utterly dwarfs the UK. Canada, after all, is the second largest country in the world at around 10 million kilometers squared. The UK is around 38 times smaller at just 242,000 kilometers squared, making it the 78th largest country in the world. Although remarkably, it is the largest island nation in Europe and the Western Hemisphere. Canada is vast and rugged land. From north to south, it spans more than half of the Northern Hemisphere. From east to west, it stretches almost 4,700 miles across six time zones. It's the second largest country in the world, but only has 0.5% of the world's population. Canada features blue lakes, numerous rivers, majestic western mountains, rolling central plains, and forested eastern valleys. The Canadian Shield, a hilly region of lakes and swamps, stretches across northern Canada and has some of the oldest rocks in the world. Canada's far north lies in the frozen grip of the Arctic, where ice, snow, and glaciers dominate the landscape. Few trees and plants grow here, and farming is not possible. Native Canadians, called First Nations people, live in this region by hunting and fishing. The United Kingdom consists of a group of islands off the northwest coast of Europe. As mentioned earlier, it is a unique country made up of four nations. England, Wales and Scotland also make up Great Britain. Much of the north and west of the UK is covered in high ground, knife-edged mountain ridges separated by very deep valleys. This terrain was shaped in the last ice age, when thick glaciers covered the land. In the south of England, the countryside is mostly rolling hills. In northwest England and the Scottish Highlands are dozens of lakes called lochs. These were left behind when the Ice Age glaciers melted. They tend to be long and narrow, and some are very deep, up to 310 meters. Because of its great latitudinal extent, Canada has a wide variety of climates. Ocean currents play an important role, with both the warm waters of the Gulf Stream in the Atlantic and the Alaska Current in the Pacific affecting the climate. Westerly winds blowing from the sea to the land are the prevailing air currents in the Pacific and bring coastal British Columbia heavy rain and moderate winter and summer temperatures. Inland, the Great Lakes moderate the weather in both southern Ontario and Quebec. In the east, the cold Labrador current meets the Gulf Stream along the coast of Newfoundland and Labrador cooling the air and causing fog. The northern two-thirds of the country has a very similar climate to that of the northern Scandinavia. With very cold winters and short, cool summers, the central southern area of the interior plains has a typical continental climate, which is cold winters, hot summers, and not too much rain. It is a common misconception that all of Canada is always cold. However, cities like Toronto, Vancouver, and Montreal see temperatures in the mid and high 20s, and even 30s throughout their summers. The UK has a temperate climate. In general, this means that Britain gets cool, wet winters, and warm, wet summers. It rarely has the extremes of heat or cold drought or wind that are common in other climates. The weather conditions are also very changeable. This is why people from the UK, including myself, talk about the weather so much, because it changes so sporadically. Let's say you lived in Dubai. You would expect to see sun pretty much every day, all day, and high temperatures. In the UK, you may wake up to the wind and rain, and then by lunchtime, it is sunny with clear skies, only to have hailstones later on in the evening. Not all parts of the UK have the same climate, however. The general pattern of climate across the UK has four distinct regions. The southeast, which has cold winters, warm and dry summers. The southwest, which has mild and very wet winters, warm and wet summers. The northwest, which has mild winters, cool summers and heavy rain all year. And finally, the northeast, which has cold winters, cool summers and steady rain all year. The coldest temperature Canada has ever experienced is minus 63 degrees Celsius in snag Yukon, which makes the UK's coldest temperature sound warm at minus 27 degrees Celsius in Aberdeenshire, Scotland. On the other hand, the highest temperature ever recorded in Canada was 49.6 degrees Celsius, which is 121 degrees Fahrenheit in Lytton, British Columbia in July 2021. The UK hit its highest ever temperature when Cambridge Botanic Gardens recorded 38.7 degrees Celsius in 2019. One thing that the UK definitely, although subjectively, beats Canada on is its geographical location. Apart from the US, Canada doesn't really have any nearby countries or neighbours. This means international travel is more expensive and harder to do. The UK, on the other hand, is surrounded by many different countries with different climate and cultures. Madrid, for example, is only two and a half hours away from London, 
Copenhagen less than two hours, and in less than four hours, you can be in Istanbul. And as the UK comprises of four different nations, plus the Republic of Ireland being a stone's throw away, you technically have super easy access to other countries. This is great for vacations and business travel. And to finish off this video, because I'm an animal lover, let's take a look at which country has the deadliest animals. I think we all know which country is more dangerous to hike and venture out into the wilderness. So Canada has moose, black widow spiders, although rare, rattlesnakes, cougars, polar, grizzly and black bears, rattlesnakes, wolves and coyotes. Whereas the UK has sheep and cows. So this one is a clear win for the UK in terms of safety, but for epicness, it's a win for Canada. So there we have it, the United Kingdom versus Canada. Who do you think won? Let us know in the comments below and while you are there, let us know which countries we should do next. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like and if you love this sort of content, consider subscribing, we've got plenty more to come. Thanks again for watching and we will see you very soon in the next video.